makes a bag stand firm? What gives a bag structure? When you put your bag on the table, why does it stay firm? Why is it not slouchy? Why is it not falling off? Okay, so today for our bag makers, we are going to be talking about interfaces slash stiffness as you must have seen from the title and the thumbnail. Like I said, I will be focusing on beginner bag makers this year. So for my beginner level beauties, this is for you. Okay, so bag interfaces and stiffness, they are both different. Okay, they are not the same. They both do different things and they're not supposed to be confused with lining because some people call them lining. I am like, lining is different. Okay, and okay. They are both important when it comes to bag making okay so guys i have my right up here so i don't forget anything because i decided to do my research before making this video and i am standing up today guys i am not sitting because we are going to be talking about that all right guys so for our table of contents we are going to be talking about the materials we are going to be knowing what they have we are going to be defining interfaces and stickers okay then we'll talk about their features the classes types how and when to use them then we move over to their similarities and differences because some of them are similar and some of them are very, very different, okay? Then we move over to our Q&A section because when I was about to make this video, when I was thinking of this video, I decided to go on Facebook, on Instagram to ask you guys questions on what you would love to know about interfaces and fitness and I got a couple of questions, so I will be answering them here, okay? All right, guys, so there are going to be timestamps in the description box below, so you can skip to any parts of the video that you are interested in. Uh, you can also watch to the end if you want to know about all of them. Disclaimer, very important, guys, disclaimer. So first off, I don't have access to all the interfaces in the world that has been produced, okay? I am not an expert. I have not used all the interfaces in the world. There are some interfaces that I see when I go to the market. I just pass by because... I don't care about them, I don't use them. And there are some interfaces that I actually use over and over and over and over again. And there are some interfaces in this world that I have never ever seen. I only see them on YouTube online. I have never ever seen. And there's some of them that I see and I just ignore because I feel like I have not really gotten a project that would require me to use such an interface. Okay. I know some of you are experts in this in this field. I know some of you know more than me. So feel free to share your ideas, your suggestions, and your corrections in the comments section so I can pin the comments and other people can learn together, okay? We are all learning. You are learning from me. I am learning from you. We are all here to learn. All right, so guys, without further ado, grab a drink, get a seat, relax, sit back, and let us go on this ride. Okay, guys, so first off, we are going to start with interfaces, okay? I have my hand here because my laptop is here, so if you see me stretching out, you know I am scrolling through my laptop, okay? So interfaces, what are interfaces? So an interfacing is a construction material used on the wrong side of the main fabric to make that part of the fabric more rigid. It changes the characteristics of the fabric. It adds threads, shape, and body to the fabric. It gives the fabric more stability. It serves as a support to the main fabric and adds crispness, not work. Okay, guys. So notice when I am de uh, defining interfacing, I am talking about fabric. I am not talking about your bag. Okay. So interfacing gets your fabric ready to be worked with okay so there are some fabrics that when you use them you can use them just like that okay it's not going to make sense you have to add an interfacing to the fabric in order to get them ready for work i don't know if you guys understand but let us define stiffness okay guys so a stiffener is what gives your bag structure it is what makes your bag stand firm okay the stiffener determines the entire shape the entire outlook the entire weight of the bag okay so i have a bag here that i would like to show you guys so guys check out this bag when you put this bag on the table it stands it stays why because there is a stiffener in this bag i don't know if you guys understand i don't know if you guys can see it right you guys can see it so when you put this bag on the table it's not slouchy okay so you can't press it like it's not something that is slouchy or that is soft why because there is a stiffener in this bag it is what gave the bag the shape that it has I hope you guys are following that example was okay so guys let us move back to interfacings okay so we are going to be talking about them one after the other we are going to first talk about interfacings then we are going to talk about stiffeners so far we've defined interfacing we've defined stiffener and i hope you understand if there is anything you don't understand feel free to ask me questions so let us go over to interfacing an interfacing can either be fusible or non-fusible when i mean fusible i mean that some of these interfacings come with tiny glue dots on one side or both sides of the interfacing and that glue is usually heat activated what do i mean by that i mean in order to get that interfacing to stay you have to iron that side as the glue to the wrong side of your fabric so the interfacing becomes part of the fabric so you work with the interfacing in your fabric like it is one 
I don't know if you guys understand. I have an example here that I am going to show you guys, but don't worry, don't worry. Later on, when we start talking about them one after the other, I'm going to show you guys. Now, when I say non-fusible, I mean that some of them don't come with glue dots on any side. For some of them, you just have to sew them in, either by hand or by machine. They don't have glue to them, all right? So both of them are good. Both of them can be used. I use both of them, anyone I get, whether it has glue or not, okay? So now let us talk about the classes of interfaces before we go over to list types of interfaces that we have. So interfaces are usually into three parts. They depend on the size, the width, or the weight, rather. The weight and the material used, okay? So there are three types of interfaces. There is the woven interfacing, there is the non-woven interfacing, and there is the neat interfacing. Now, guys, I want you to know something. For us bag makers, most of the items that we use in bag making are borrowed from other fields, okay? So we use materials that are from furniture makers, we use materials that are for shoemakers, we use materials that are for tailors, garment makers, we use materials that are for construction workers, okay, building workers, okay? So that's what I feel about barbecue. When it comes to interfacing, most of them are borrowed from tailors, okay? So most of these interfaces are usually for garment makers, okay? So when it comes to the neat interfacing, I believe that for bag makers, we don't need that. So we are going to be looking at the woven and non-woven interfacing. So the woven interfacing is more like the normal fabric. It gives you the fabric type of feel. Most of our fabrics are woven that the thread passes horizontally and vertically in order to make them a fabric. That is what a woven interfacing is. It is a paper, no, it is a fabric type of interfacing, guys. It is a fabric type of interfacing. Why the non-woven fabric, the non-woven interfacing, which is the one that I love to use most of the time, is a paper type of interfacing, okay? The woven interfacing gives you a cotton slash muslin, muslin type of feel, while the non-woven interfacing gives you a paper type of feel. So when you fold the paper and create that let me show you guys so this is one when you fold it like so you know the way you do to paper it stays right I don't know if you guys can see can you guys see that it stays compared to the woven interfacing so guys let us go over the types of interfacings that we have okay first off and i feel like that is the most popular one we are stay in this part of the world we call it color stay but guys let us just get this straight in this part of the world we don't call things the actual name that they have we create nicknames for them and that nickname just stays and most of us do not even know the real name of these items so i am going to give you i'm going to give you us the real names and also their nicknames and i'm also going to be leaving pictures and videos and tips on the screen because i may not be able to say everything okay so color stay in this part of the world, we call it stay, but I feel like it is equivalent to the deco board 809 that is used in Europe or in the US. So guys, the color stay is a non-woven interfacing. It is, most likely, it is most likely used by garment makers to add rigidity to the color and it is paper-like and it gives crispness when it folds, it stays, okay? So a stay comes in various thicknesses i want to show you guys the ones that i have right here okay so i feel like this one right here is equivalent to deco bond 809 can you guys see this so this side that has the shiny side is the side that has the glue okay so this is one i showed you guys when you fold it it stays then the second size that i have right here is thicker than that of the first one let me pick this up let me first show you guys the first one so this is the second type of interfacing or stay that i have and you guys see so this one is a lot thicker than the first one i showed you guys so this is the first this is the first one i showed you guys can you guys see how thick this one is then this is the second one So this one is lighter and this one is thicker. You use them in different situations. So you place your fabric wrong side facing up. 
then you place the interfacing the glue side facing the wrong side of the fabric that is facing up then you iron from the side of the interfacing that does not have the glue for me i don't put fabric on top of the interfacing before ironing i just iron like that but i feel like you are supposed to normally you are supposed to put fabric your ironing protective layer before you place your iron then you iron so for large areas what you have to do is just iron from the middle then work your way to the edges so when to use them so for this type of interfacing for the softer type i usually use it for card slots and wallets uh let me put a wallet here So guys, for the cut slot side of the wallets, I feel like this interfacing is going to do justice to it. And also guys, if you're working with a lining for a bag and you feel like the lining fabric is not thick enough, then you can use this interfacing to line the fabric. For this, you can use it to make like, how would I put it? You can add this to the side of your bags okay so if you're making a bag that has um a bag that is very structured if you're making something like this then you can decide to use this at the side of the bag in order to give the side more flexibility okay guys and you can also use them to make like small pouches or purses you can use them with the main fabric without using any interface and just this to the main fabric then the lining in order to make pouches or small purses and all of that but using this to make a big um a big bag that would take much load is not advisable using it alone is not advisable okay guys so we are going to move over to the next interfacing we have and this one is a fusible fleece it is a fleece but in this part of the world we call it wadding or breast pad and this one is borrowed from dressmakers. It is what dressmakers use in the breast pad part of a blouse. Okay, guys. So this one can be fusible or non-fusible. Okay. So I already defined fusible and non-fusible for you guys. And this one also comes in several thicknesses and in different colors. So I have the right up here. Let me read that to you guys. So fleece, aka warden or breast pad, is a soft foam-like interfacing. It doesn't give you the paper feel. It can be fusible or non-fusible and it usually comes in different colors. It's, it's, it is used to add like little padding to the bag. It adds strength to the bag but at the same time maintains drape within the fabric. It adds body and softness to the fabric. Okay guys, so I have some example right here. Let me show you guys. Bring it out, bring it out, bring it out. Okay guys, so this is what I am talking about guys. This one I have here is fusible, and this one that I have here is non-fusible, okay? So both of them come in yeah, like different thicknesses. I don't know if you guys can see them. So this one right here, the white one, is thicker than that of the black one, okay? And the white one has the shiny side, which is the side that has the glue. It is fusible on one side, can you guys see? And the other side is just fleece. This is why it's called fusible fleece guys the other side is just fleece okay guys so for this one how to use it when it comes to the other type of interface in the stay that i told you guys all you have to do is put your fabric then the wrong side this is my rag by the way then you place it on the wrong side of the fabric then you can iron from the side of the stay but for a fusible fleece you cannot iron from this side because this side is fleece obviously you should not have this on your iron okay so what you would do is place your fleece on top of the table, place your fabric, wrong side touching your fleece, then you iron from the right side of the fabric, okay? So it stays to your fabric and you can work with it. Now for the other fleece, all you have to do is sew it to your fabric, okay? Since this one is non-fusible, since it has no gum, then you glue it to the fabric so that is how to use now when to use so i mostly use them for tote bag pocket bag pillows pouches and all of that okay so there's some kind of bag this usable fleece i love it a lot so there's some kind of bags that you want it to have structure but you want it to still be able to relax to still be able to drip so guys for this tote bag i used the non-fusible interfacing for and i really 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 do love the outcome 
once again, guys, I am not familiar with thicknesses, millimeters, and all of that, but this is how thick it is, guys. Can you guys see that? This is how thick it is. So I use this on both sides of this bag, and I really, really, really do love the outcome. Guys, as you can see, this bag still has a structure, right? It still has structure. But when you fuse it together, when you fuse it together, you can't fuse it together. But again, it can retain the structure. Now, I have another bag that I used this fusible interface for. So guys, this is an unfinished project from years ago. It is a bucket bag, and as you can see, I have already started fixing the eyelets. So for this bag, I used this interfacing, guys, the white interfacing. Again, guys, this is the thickness of the interfacing, and one side of it has glue. Now, one thing I like about this fusible interfacing is that you can squish the bag, you can squish it, but if you want it to regain its structure, it stays. Now, at the bottom of this bag, I used a stiffener, okay? If I used just the interfacing, the bottom of this bag won't be as stiff as it is right now, okay? So, guys, I hope this gives you an idea of what the fusible fleece does, okay? And for the fusible fleece, I feel like it is great for quilting. I don't know if you guys can see this. So, the next type of interfacing that we have is the soft foam. Now, guys, the soft foam, that is what we call it in this part of the world, but the real name for the soft foam is the upholstery foam, and it is borrowed from furniture makers. So, this is what it looks like. I am going to be leaving photos on the screen so you guys can see. Now, guys, this is what the soft foam looks like. It comes in various thicknesses and in various colors. This one, I I kind of stole it from somewhere, but I have not really used it to make bag because I don't use this particular thickness to make bag. I am going to use the thickness that I use on the screen. It's about a quarter of an inch or so. I am going to put it on the screen for you guys to see. Now, guys, this foam is great for quilting, and I believe that the thicker your foam, the deeper the quilting. So soft foam or posture foam mostly used for furniture and comes in different colors and thicknesses. How to use, this is non-fusible, it has no gum on its side, it is usually used for mattress and furniture and all of that. So you either sew it to your fabric or you glue it to a stiffener. Okay? So you either sew it to your fabric or you glue it to a stiffener. Now guys, if I wanted to use, now we go over, now you're going over to when to use, okay? So if I wanted to use the upholstery foam for this bag, trust me, I would have gotten away with it. But the difference between the fleece and this upholstery foam is that the fleece still has some kind of structure. But for the foam, it is just foam. So it's just squishy, squishy foam. Dust everywhere. But for this, it still has some kind of fabric -y type of feel to it. I don't know if you guys understand. For, so when to use, most of the times I use this foam when I am making a stiff bag but I want that stiff bag to have like a soft touch to it. So for this bag, I have a stiffener. I have a stiffener, but because when I want people to touch this bag, I don't want it to be like just stiffener, stiffener, stiffener. I want it to have that soft kind of feel. That is when I use the soft foam most times, okay? Most times. So and also it is great for quilts, the deeper the quilt, the thicker the foam, the deeper the quilt, and it's also used to make a Stiff bag feels soft. Time. So, guys, those are the type of interfacings that I have for you guys because in this part of the world, they are the ones that we use the most. Okay, so the SF101, the Deco Bond Lights, Deco Bond Heavy, Craft Fuse, and all of that, I am not really familiar with them because in this part of the world, we don't really have access to all of that. Now, guys, the similarities between interfacings and stiffness both of them can be non fusible and fusible, and both of them come in various widths and thicknesses. I feel like that we are the only similarities I could think of. Now, guys, we all know that there are different types of bags, okay? When I get questions like, what materials or what equipment do I need to make bags? It differs, okay? Bags are not like shoes. Bags come in different forms, okay? If you're making leather bag, which I don't mostly do, but if you're making leather bag, most of the times you don't need this type of interfaces. Most of the times you only need stiffness, okay? So if you're making leather bag, you are like good to go when it comes to interfaces, okay? So if you're using fabric, that's when you have to use interfacing because some of this fabric, when it comes to making bag, you cannot just use them like that. You have to add something to them and that gets the fabric ready to be worked with. And when I want to buy interfacing, I am in Lagos, Nigeria, for some of you who do not know. And for those of us in Lagos, Nigeria, when it comes to interfacing, I usually go to shops where they sell tailoring materials. Most of the times I go to Oshodi. 
when you go to Osho, they wear this artillery materials and these interfaces. You will see varieties, guys. You will see lots of them. Okay, you will see the woven ones, you will see the non woven ones, you will see the very thick one, you will see the very slim one, you will see the very tiny one, guys. The whole thing is large, okay. And aside from Osho, when it comes to interfacing, I usually also go to Lagos Island, okay, where they sell artillery materials. So, guys. When you want to know the type of interfacing you want to use, I just feel like the more you experiment, the more you make mistakes, the more you work with your creative side, the more you do this thing, that is when you will know that, okay, this is the type of interfacing that I want, okay? So for this type of bag, I already know that, okay, I want this bag to be like this, this is a bucket bag. And in order to get this type of feel, this is the type of interfacing that may work for it okay that is likely to give me the results that i want same with a bag like this okay so i want i want the nepa really light in the afternoon and since then i've not been able to record this is 10 25 pm in the night i have to put on the generator so i'm sure you can hear the sounds of the generator so guys let us continue i know that was too much information but i just have to keep it real with you guys so guys, stiffness, we are moving over to stiffness. I already defined stiffness for you guys. So let us move over to the very first stiffener we have, which is like the most popular type of stiffener in this part of the world. So the very first stiffener that we have on the list is cellulose board, aka carry board, which some of us know it as, okay? So the real name for this thing is cellulose board, not carry board, carry board okay? Carry board is just a brand. And it comes in different types different thicknesses okay so there is texon there is web text there is soul text and so much more carry board is borrowed from shoemaking okay so this is a shoemaking board usually used as insole by shoemakers and it is what most of us use in this part of the world to make our bags see it also comes in different thicknesses so i have one here to show you guys as you can see the drawing of the sole on the board and this particular one is so text okay so whenever i go to the markets i just buy so text and that's what i am used to you don't have to but that's what i am used to and this is the thickness i don't know if you guys can see that can you see how thick it is it is not really very very thick but it is stiff okay it is very very stiff so how to use these guys so most times if you're working with leather or fabric all you have to do is gum the fabric or the leather to the board and you're ready to work with okay but for me most times when i want to make bags if i use board alone i don't really like using body alone because it doesn't make the feel of the bag soft just make it feel like pop okay so most times i either glue a foam the upholstery foam i showed you guys to the board then I attach my fabric to it, okay? Before working, before making my bag. Or I use the next type of stiffener that we want to talk about, which is EVA foam, okay? So when to use, if you want your bag to, to be stiff, to stay and to stand, that is when you put this, but that's when you use this, but what am I saying? So if you want your bag to be stiff, if you want it to stand, something like this, so this pattern that I have right here is the pattern for this bag, okay? So if you want your bag to stay stiff, if you want it to be super duper stiff, that is when you use this board, which is what most of us use. So you mostly use it for ladies' handbag and all of that. I have the board here. And of course, these are just some of the bags. I didn't bring all the bags. I just brought some out. So if you want your bag to be stiff, this is what you use this is what gives your bag shape okay so there are so many questions what what do you put inside the bag why does the bag stand and everything this is what you use this carry board this cellulose board is what you use in order to give your bag shape okay i hope i answer because there have been so many questions about this stuff so i hope i answer that okay so the next interfacing on my list is the eva foam okay so the real name of this thing is EVA foam, but in this part of the world, we call it Marco. And this is also borrowed from shoemakers because they also use this as insole. So most of the time, shoemakers put this one, then put the Marco on top of it, okay, to give that soft feel. So let's read. This EVA foam is short for ethylene vinyl estate. I hope I read that right. It is a closed cell foam, mostly used by shoemakers as insole. It comes in different colors and thicknesses and is also used in gym mats and life jacket. So I have a couple here to show you guys. This one right here is purple. This is black. It comes in different colors, right? So I have three types of thicknesses here with me. 
So this is why I hope you guys can see how thick that is. This is very thin and it's very, very flexible, okay? So this is the second one. Can you guys see the difference? I don't know if you guys can see that. So this one is thicker than this one. Can you guys see? Then let me bring the third one that I have for you guys. Which is like the thickest one I have. It is the thickest one I have. So can you guys see how thick this one is? So side by side. Ah, trying to look for a way to show you guys. I don't want to cut this thing. So this is the thinnest one I have right here. Then the two other ones that I have. Can you guys see that the thicknesses are all different? Okay. So depends on what you want. You can actually use this to make a full bag okay so there are some bags that i would love to make i want them to have structure but i don't want them to be stiff as they both okay i want them to still be able to be flexible excuse me because this one still gives you flexibility this is the thickest one i've got right here it still gives you flexibility okay compared to the board that is just very very stiff okay so i have a bag here that i made with this marco so this is a round bag as you can see, the, slide, the sides are not stiff. I can still move them if I want to. I can still, can you guys see? I can still move it if I want to. But if I had used a board for this bag, it will be very, 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 very stiff. Okay, it won't be as flexible as it is right now. It still gives that foamy kind of feel, but it's not a foam, okay? I can even squish, like try to squish it if i want and you guys see how it's folding but for a board you cannot do something like that okay so when to use what i wrote here so use in top of board on the top of bond for use on top of a board for softness or use to make leather ladies bag or add to the base of a bag of a soft bag to prevent the bottom from falling okay i think what i wrote that because i didn't remember so guys our base right here as you can see this bag is a very soft bag but our base is not falling why because i have two different stiffeners here one stiffener would have worked really really fine but i had i had to put like two stiffeners and that's just see what i would get that is why the bottom of this bag is not falling so i first use i used the board and the marco together okay but you can say to use just this marco or the ever from the insole alone at the base of a soft bag now guys let us move over to the next type of stiffener which is chipboard okay first off i want you to know that there are several types of chipboard okay if you go to a carpenter shop and you say you want to buy chipboard they are going to give you chipboard but the wooden kind of chipboard okay so for us bag makers we use paper chipboard okay and this paper chipboard comes in different colors and different thicknesses too so let's read so paper chipboard is a recycled material mostly used in furniture and buildings like i say we borrow things we borrow things okay comes in different colors and thicknesses and the type we use in nigeria has the texture of a cereal box or attachment paper and is mostly used as lining interface for stiff bag and also the side of leather bags okay so let me show you guys the one i have here so this is the one i mostly use so if you look behind me if you check behind me you can see some stiffeners and some of this paper this is what i use most of the time to draft my patterns okay so this is the one we have so the one i usually see or the one i usually buy is white but it comes in like brown color in a way i think it has brown too so this is how thick it is can you guys see it is literally the texture of a book cover okay like a higher higher education book cover so for the one i use one side is white and the other side is gray can you guys see don't think both sides are white this side is as like grayish and the other side is pure white now guys when do we use let's first talk about how to use so most of the times you just use your contact cement and glue it to your fabric that you're working on most of the times i use it as lining interface for stiff bags okay so for a bag like this for a bag like this for the lining since we cannot use the fabric alone we will use the chipboard together with the lining okay since the lining is fabric like i used suede the lining is fabric like and i didn't want to use the lining alone all by itself okay 
so it won't really give that stiffness and also for this too okay so it is the chipboard that you wrap with the fabric and you attach to the main body okay i don't know if i'm making sense i don't know if you guys understand all the things i am saying and also you can use it as you can use it in leather bag in the side of the leather bag okay so most of the times we want the side of the bag to be flexible so this is what you put inside of the leather then you attach to the main body i hope you guys understand let me see if I, okay i still have another stiffener on my list which is synthetic leather now guys i usually do not use synthetic leather as stiffener or as interfacing most of the times okay so when it comes to choosing interfacing you have to be careful and you have to consider your sewing machine what can your sewing machine take okay so most of the times i avoid leather generally as you must have seen from the bags that i have been showing i usually avoid making leather bags because it cannot have a phobia for leather <laughs> we'll discuss that on another day so guys synthetic leather i feel like it can pass as vxp microfiber leather but that will consign us we don't use that most of the time in this part of the world it's soft leather kind of fabric that you can use in certain situations so most times you use it when you want to make your bag handles if you need something to interface with the main fabric your bag handles or to make recessed zipper kind of blue all you have to do is glue it to the fabric okay another stiffener that is on my list is APA foam which is short for expanded polyethylene foam it is a lightweight semi-rigid flexible closed cell foam mostly used in packaging i am sure most of us must have seen it one or two times but means and it's fine so it is available in different thicknesses it is mostly white but can be dyed to different colors we don't need color if it is going to be inside of the bag we don't need to choose colors okay so how to use you just sew in the foam to your fabric or leave an opening big enough for you to slip the foam inside and close the opening later okay so when to use this foam is mostly used for backpack straps <laughs> lunch boxes or a backpack itself now guys or laptop padding in main bag laptop paddings in a bag or in bag itself i don't know if you guys understand that so it's flexible it regains its form easily i don't have one here it is water resistance it has insulation properties that is why it is good for launch boxes it is easy to handle it is lightweight it is hot it's so easy to work with okay so when bag makers advertise their bag to you and they tell you that oh this bag comes with a padded zipper closure that can contain your 15 inch laptop bag it is water resistant stain resistant and all of that this is what they mean okay this is what they use okay so for a tote bag like a big work bag okay and you put in a space for laptop and that space has a zipper closure and it is waterproof and it has this foam texture in order to protect your laptop against other shock and outside properties this is what they use this is what they mean i hope i've been able to explain that right okay i feel like i'm talking too much and i hope you guys understand so far don't forget to share your knowledge so i can pin it in the comments and you can learn okay so now guys differences between interfacing and stiffener okay so the only difference hmm, you need to know is that interfacing is mostly for fabrics why is stiffener is what determines the structure of your bag okay and interfacing hmm, is what you add to the fabric to get it ready to be worked with okay why the stiffener is what determines the entire structure of the bag there are some bags that you can make interfaces with a low like small bags but when it comes to big bags that will carry load and you want it to retain structure you should look for a stiffener so guys it is time for our q and a some of you asked questions about bag interfaces and stiffeners so let us go over to my laptop and we can answer the questions okay first off adejo ojo Egba Lydia, I said that wrong. It is Adejo Egba Ojo Lydia, and the question is how and when to use them. Okay, I have already explained how and when to use all the ones that I listed. Okay, so if it is fusible, you iron it to the wrong side of the fabric. If it is non fusible, you sew it to the wrong side of the fabric. That is for interfaces. And most of the stiffeners, what we use in this part of the world, is contact adhesive, aka shoemaker gum. Okay, so you just use your shoemaker gum 
and attach it to the wrong side of the fabric so that it stays okay when to use them the type of bag you want to make your imagination by the time you start imagining by the time you start sketching if you want the bag to be stiff you should already have an idea of the type of stiffener that you will use or interfaces okay next question are they voila comfort are they filler what are their uses i already explained them okay interfaces for fabrics stiffeners for the structure of the bag okay are your daily babalola esther i would love to know more about their uses i already explained your uses for you Inco adavisent does it depend on the kind of materials being used or it's for all materials guys interfacing is not for all materials okay it depends on the type of material that you are using if you are using leather most of the times you don't need interfacing but if you're using like ankara like i do or a very soft fabric because there are different fabrics when it comes to making bags guys forget the type of fabrics that we use to make bags in this type of the world okay they are in this side of the world there are different fabrics for making bags okay that is why interfacing is popular in bag making because there are some fabrics you use that you have to interface them before you use the fabric before the fabric is ready to be worked with now when it comes to leather most of the times we only use stiffeners okay so the eva foam and cellulose board and the chipboard for the lining and the side that's it most of the times and more to cut the rats how they are used i already explained that so in adequoia this type of foam you posted can it be used instead of normal foam okay so the type of foam i posted was the fusible fleece and the button can it be used instead of normal foam yes but the results will be different okay so if i had used normal foam for this the quilting will be deeper and it will be softer okay but this one is more durable for me instead of just normal foam but you can use the fusible fleece in place of normal foam okay so like I said, we use the normal foam, which is the upholstery foam, to make our stiff bag feel softer. You can also use that foam, the fusible fleece, instead of the foam, and you can use the foam instead of the fusible fleece. So both of them can go hand in hand, okay? So Tony Adekoya again, is it possible to use only foam without cellulose board? It depends on the look that you are going for, guys. Is it possible to use only the foam without cellulose board? It depends on the look. For this bag right here, it is both foam and cellulose board, okay? So there is foam, there is the cellulose board, which is the main stiffener. It is what gives the bag shape. While the foam is to make the bag feel softer when you touch it, so that it's not just board, 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 and stiff, okay? So both of them serve different purposes, okay? So you can see that both the foam and the cellulose board served me in two different ways, okay? So they are both different. Now, if I had used the foam instead of cellulose board, just have it in mind that the bag will be all soft flimsy and squishy and i will be able to like squish it down okay so you cannot use foam where you are supposed to use cellulose board and you cannot use cellulose board where you are supposed to use foam okay so imagine me using foam for this okay and i decide to use cellulose board instead of foam it will not work it won't be able to squish or fold or give me the bucket bag effect that i want okay so is it possible to use only for me? No, 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 okay? It depends on the look you are going for. It depends on the type of bag you want to make. So don't go and use for me. You're supposed to use a loose board. Don't go and use a loose board when you're supposed to use for okay? So as that, how to interface for leather or vinyl without it press? First off, when you work with leather, I advise against using it on any form on the main part of the leather or your vinyl. It will melt okay so for leather is made from it's plastic okay so when you put it to plastic what does it do it melts okay so you cannot use it to interface your full leather directly from the front part okay so if you want to use interfacing for your leather all you have to do is place the wrong side of the leather right wrong side facing you so you place the leather on the table wrong side facing you so let us imagine that this is our leather okay let's imagine this is the wrong side of the leather so i am going to place my leather on the table this is the table so i'm going to place it on the table wrong side facing up so this is the wrong side of our leather okay and i'm going to place the side of my interfacing that has the glue this is the side of the interfacing that has the glue i am going to place it like so and i'm going to iron my interfacing to the wrong side of the leather okay so there are some interfaces that when you use you have to put a pressing cloth on top of it then you iron it but there are some interfaces that you can get away without putting any ironing clothes on it so i hope i've been able to do justice to that question i've been able to answer the question okay Mo Moinot Hosseini 
how do we make use of them? I already explained that. Amadu Kudirat, how they are used, I already explained that. Oshubote, Deborah. If I want to sew Ankara bag, which one do I use as a line? Okay, as lining for Ankara bag. As lining for your Ankara bag. Okay. I already took the stay inside. So most of the times, as lining for my Ankara bag, I, use, I usually use chibot. Okay. Like I explained, you use chibot. Then you put your lining on the chibot. Then you use it as your lining. But if you don't want to use chibot, what I do is I use stay. Okay. Remember that stay comes in different thicknesses. There is a stay that has the same thickness as a chibot. Okay. So I already showed you guys in the beginning of the video. That stay is what I use in place of a chibot if I don't want to use a chibot. Okay. So what I do is that I just iron the stay to the lining fabric. Then I use it for my lining fabric. Okay. So is that you use stay or you use cheap board or you can also use your cellulose board for the lining i don't know if i should show you guys how to make ankara bags or not so this part of this bag is just the fabric okay so it is just the ankara fabric there is nothing inside of the ankara fabric it is just the ankara fabric alone that i use as lining for this part while for the inside of the bag it is the same cellulose board that is the lining for the bag okay if you notice you can see that it is two boards glued together because the main board the main bag is the board and the line of the bag is also the board okay so you can also use your board if you know how to as lining latifat mohammed apart from foam any other foam that is soft and can be used for straps okay so apart from ep foam i assume that's what you are asking any other foam that you can use for straps okay see eh? First off, for me, I have not really been able to figure out if any other foam can do what EP foam can do. Normal upholstery foam will be able to do it if you get that kind of thickness. But EP foam is what will give the best results, okay? So the idea is to make the strap comfortable on the shoulder and for it to last longer, okay? And I feel like upholstery foam will not last as long as the way EP foam will last and may not give you the same amount of comfort. It will be comfortable, yes, but it will not do what EP foam will do. So if you are going to use upholstery foam, just know that you are going to be reducing the quality of what you are making and quality is very essential when it comes to things like this because you want to keep a good reputation, right? With your customers, okay? So for me, I prefer you keep using EP foam if that is what you use and don't compromise on quality, okay? So that is all the questions I got from my research that I decided to do. If there is anything you want to add, please leave it in the comment section. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I don't know it all, okay? I would really, really love to learn from you. There are so many other interfaces around the world that I would really, really love to work with that I have seen online and I would really, really love to place my hand on, okay? And there are so many interfaces that I see in the market and I just pass by. And now that we've discussed about this, I would really, really love to experiment and use those interfaces too. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Do not forget to use the hashtag DIY with Juliet on social media so I can see your DIYs that you make and you can be posted. Remember, this year is for my beginner level beauties out there. So if you're a beginner, join the DIY community. Give me a thumbs up if you let, even if it's just one thing from this video, okay? Love you. Thank you.